Hi, Cizren here with another video for Last Epoch, and this is going to be Last Epoch for Beginners. And I do want to say that this video is sponsored by 11 Hour Games or Last Epoch, so thank you so much for the sponsor, and we're going to be covering how can you get into this game and what do you need to know. If you're interested, a great way to support the channel is that you can buy Last Epoch through my Nexus link, which is in the description down below, and I get a kickback. So let's start with the character select screen, and some players might be coming from other ARPGs like Diablo or Path of Exile, so I will be giving some examples for those that are already familiar for ARPGs, but for the most part we'll be assuming that most people are new. We do here have the character creation screen, and you can actually play offline as well, there are offline characters, and then there are online, and you can play this game in a group, and as other games you might be used to, it has different character classes. Now, this is a little bit more similar to Diablo and less similar to Path of Exile. So for those of you familiar with Path of Exile, your base class isn't as important and it will draw you in a certain direction, but it won't like lock you to certain skills. Whereas similar to Diablo, a lot of skills are actually based off this. So you can see here are the key skills that the Sentinel gets. And then the Void Knight, Forge Guard, and Paladin will also get different skills. These are called Masteries, and they could also, they are similar to the Path of Exile Ascendancies, and they're basically a subclass. First, you will have to select what class do you want to start with, and then you will later be able to choose your Mastery. Now, you cannot change your class, nor can you change your Mastery once that has been selected. So they do want you to experiment and make different characters if you want to play around with that and the game actually does that pretty well and honestly in a lot of aspects last epoch really hits a perfect middle ground between path of exile and diablo 4 which are some of the most played arpgs at the moment what do i mean by that well in difficulty complexity and and pretty much everything it really does hit a middle ground doesn't have the complexity and the depth of Path of Exile, but that is something that can be very off-putting to a lot of people, that it's too confusing and it takes too long to get into, but it's not as shallow as Diablo 4. So for those that are maybe, they're looking for something a little bit more complex, but not that complex, this can hit the perfect spot. And when you're picking a character, obviously it won't hurt to go look around like what are some streamers playing, look out for some builds you like, and you have to decide, am I going to play the game an experiment or am I going to pick a build guide? So, and a lot of people will be finding guides on things like Max Troll, etc. I've been working with some of the creators there and I will be featuring a lot of the Max Troll creators and a few other Last Epoch creators on my channel to show you guys who are some really great Last Epoch creators. But first, let's make a character and just look in-game what it looks like on a brand new character. And now you do also have to choose, are you going to be on Standard or Hardcore? And with launch, there are going to be Chapters, which is similar to the Path of Exile Leagues or the Diablo Seasons. You also have Character Fun, which is now similar to Solo Cell Fun in Path of Exile. Now, the game is easier than Path of Exile, so playing Hardcore as your first time has been pretty okay for me. I can't remember if I've ever had a softcore character in Last Epoch, but I generally always play Hardcore and... There's been a few unbalanced monsters that have one-shot me and stuff, but I've been able to get past that and had a pretty good time playing hardcore. Now, you start out, and you don't start out with anything, pretty much. And um, here you can see that the passive skill tree is a much easier experience than, for example, Path of Exile. You aren't greeted by, like, 200 nodes. So taking a minute or two to look over everything and, and getting a general idea of what kind of build you want to work towards is not too bad. And um, you very quickly will get a feel for what skills you like. Do you like melee skills? Do you like range skills? And I would say that you do want to pretty early on get a rough idea of what type of character you want to make. However, respecking is incredibly easy in this game. And I'll show you a little bit about that in a second. But uh, each skill as well has their own skill tree. So we start out here with Summon Wolf. And at level 4, we get to specialize in Summon Wolf and start putting skill points here. Here as well, you can see that there aren't that many points. And the tree honestly gives you a pretty good indication already. You can see that the nodes here, like these are clearly lightning related. These are kind of ice related. And the tooltips and stuff are pretty well made there where, you know, 
you have a, a rough idea on what things are doing. And by hovering over them, you see like the rough idea of what that part of the skill tree is going to do. Like here we have bleed, here we have wolves up to companion limit. And that is basically, uh, you could have, let's say, a companion limit of six or five, right? So you can have five total summons, but you might only be able to have one or two wolves. If you have this node, then you would be able to have five wolves. And, um, you could have then a different party where you have a saber tooth, a bear, two wolves, etc. Um, and you can like play around with this depending on what type of build. It is similar to Path of Exile in that there are more deep mechanics at the end game. So for the builds that are really strong and things like that, you might not initially figure those things out without a guide. So you do have very experienced last epoch players like Lizard that will come out with very cool builds that are things you may be not thinking of as a new player. And that will be able to take a build to the next level, whether that be in just insane damage, insane clear speed, or insane tank. And this is pretty much what it looks like as a new player. So you don't start out with much. You see the wolves here. And uh, as a cool thing for minion players, just by clicking A, I can control my minion. That's not like anything that I need to gain later in the campaign. That's just a default feature. So I can literally like send my minion around and tell it what to attack just by hitting A. Which honestly, Last Epoch does minions really well. And the Primalist is some of my most fun I've had playing a summoner. Now I'm going to go on my Rune Master, which I call the Invoker because it's, well, it's very similar to the D Dota 2 Invoker. But what I want to show off is some of the respec features to maybe put you at ease a little bit on how hard is it to respec in this game. So right here, we see that the minimum specialized level is five. That means that if I spec out of this and put it into another one or put it into the same one, I'll instantly get five skill points. And this will go all the way up to 15 or something later, and it will have accelerated XP skill gain until it's caught up with my other skills. I can also remove one point, and the more it's missing, it's going to level up very fast. So if you put one point wrong or you didn't really like what it did to your skill, it's very quickly to level it back up. Now, especially later, it's even less punishing. During the campaign, there will be uh, a little bit of a slower level time, but it still felt really good to respec in this game. But what about my passives? How do they respec? So here we can see that I go to the Rune Master tree and it costs me 140 gold to respec. Gold is pretty easy to get. You do get it passively just by playing and vendoring things. And if you're low on gold, you can just pick up more items to vendor them. But yeah, very easy to respec. And then I get the point. And you do have to make sure that you have the dependencies. Like here you see that there is three needed before I can do that. So I couldn't take this one to two and still have a point here. And here at the bottom, it does show you what different skills you're getting by what different thresholds. So once you have Rune Master level five, you get that. And Rune Master level 15, you get this. And later we'll get Glyph of Dominion and Rune Bolt. Now, if we go open the character panel here, you can see that we have the stats. I have zero strength, dexterity, intelligence, attunement, and vitality. So on this character, the only thing I care about pretty much is intelligence, especially for leveling. Now, um, hovering over them will show you what it does. Like very often it will be, you know, vitality gives you life. That's good for tanky and good for hardcore. But uh, very often if we hover over the skill here, you'll see scaling tags. So fire, spell, intelligence. And generally for my build, intelligence is what I want to stack just to increase the damage. There are no attribute requirements like other games where you need like 155 dexterity or something like that to be able to wield an item. Here it is mostly a leveling requirement where you need to be high enough level to use the item. Now let's talk about some basic gear and how do you get it? So you will be dropping gear just by killing monsters and it's... Um, you have normal items that are crafting bases. You have uh, blue items that are magic. You have yellow bases that are rare. And then you also have legendaries. And this game has set items. So here you have the shop. And the shop, I think, refreshes every 15 minutes. And honestly, when I'm on my first character, I'm very often buying these as soon as I have gold. And they're basically to break down gear to give you crafting components. And you will uh, also group pick up these things. Whenever there's something like shards, and the, let's say there's eight or nine lying in a bunch, clicking one of them will loot all of them. And then you can click transfer crafting items and they will appear in your crafting materials. Now, the vendor has pretty limited stuff, but you will sometimes just see like maybe a, a really good uh, weapon or something that you can buy in during the campaign. But I do find that I find most of my gear. We'll cover a few more item types because uniques also have something called legendary potential is a bit of an end game feature, but 
I do want to lightly cover it because it is very exciting and I do go in depth more in this in other videos. But the way this works is uh, you can smash a regular item into unique item creating your very own unique item that maybe nobody else has. And that's what we've done with this weapon here. So the red stats is basically a rare item smashed into this. I did just want to mention that early because I think it's such a cool feature. And it's things like this that gets me really excited for a video game. And I can tell you that this makes leveling new characters super exciting, which for me is honestly one of the most important features in an action role playing game that I find something on maybe I have like a really high end character and getting a little bit bored of it, but I don't want to start entirely for, from scratch. And that makes it so exciting when I do find something or make something that just makes the new character pop off early on and have a good time with it. And this game does that really well. Now let's look a little bit at crafting. So let's say that I needed to make a critical strike chance ring. Maybe I get the base here from the vendor and you don't need to physically go to the forge. You can see there's one on my overlay map, uh, which this game has an overlay map, which is very nice. I'm a huge fan of that. Now I have this ring and you can see that it only has 12 forging potential and it has some stats already on it. Now, Last Epoch is very deterministic in its crafting and the forging potential is how many crafts you can do. So if we see here, let's say that I was playing a minion build, this would be a really good outcome. And I can just now click the up arrow and here it costs between one and 12 forging potential. So if I click this now, it has a chance that it only uses one forging potential and the minion damage will go up. And, and no matter what here, the minion damage will go up. What if I'm a block build and I want to focus on that? I can simply click on that. And the number here is how many of these shards I have. So throughout playing, I have just been sharding different um, pieces of gear and keeping a lookout for the things that I'm playing on my build. Or maybe at some point you'll start thinking about, ooh, I'm maybe wanting to pivot into this build, I will start looking out for those shards and you will use those um, Rune of Shattering that you buy from the vendor and you find them by killing monsters to destroy an item. There is another rune as well, and we will cover the crafting system now as well, uh, called the Rune of Removal, which is similar to a Rune of Shattering, but it only removes one at a time. The key difference here, which is important to learn as a new player, if I use a Rune of Shattering, uh, it can give me one or two minion damage and one, two, or three block chance and effectiveness. And it could give you zero. So zero to three and zero to two on those. However, if I use a Rune of Removal, it will use the forging potential. So I might only get one try, but whatever it removes, I will get all of it. So if there's a very important stat, well, let's say it has four or five shards of something that's super important for my character, that's when the rune of removal comes in handy. But let's cover all the different runes and all the different glyphs, and then we'll just show and teach a little bit about crafting. It's a pretty important thing to learn in Last Epoch, and it's such a delightful system, and I really love talking about it. So we have the Rune of Shattering and the Rune of Removal that breaks down items. We have the Rune of Refinement. If you're a Path of Exile player, this is similar to the Divine Orb, and it will re-roll the affixes between the different tiers. If we hold Alt and Control, you can see that the minion damage here goes between 13 and 21 and uh, 81 to 120 block effectiveness. So this is already a very high rolled item. That means that we wouldn't need to use a Rune of Refinement. Rune of Discovery is really nice when you're starting a new chapter and you really want to find things for your build. Let's say that I'm looking for plus one fireball or I'm looking for fire damage on the helmet, etc. Then maybe I'll be targeting the pieces that I know have those stats um, like maybe I've already seen that chests can have fireball and generally chest and helmet are where most plus skill gem things are. So I will be using a lot of my rune of discovery on those as well as summon weapons. And uh, yeah, they can just get you started really nicely. Rune of Shaping, this is similar to the Path of Exile Blessed Orb. So you can see here that uh, it's 25 to 50 increased critical strike chance on the implicit here. Rune of Ascendance will turn it into a unique item off that base. And Rune of Creation will duplicate the item. So if you have a really nice item that you maybe want to use on multiple characters, or you want to use two of the ring, then you can mirror it. However, the forging potential of both the original and the copy go to zero. So it needs to be the last thing you do. And what about these scrolls? What do they do? So the Glyph of Hope, this is what you're doing later on or on important items that you really care about. I will generally not use these early because I find that when I'm actually crafting a lot, I will run out of them so fast. It's also very important to get rid of it after crafting. I sometimes leave it in when we'll accidentally use it on an item I don't care about. 
With this in, you can see that it has a 25% chance that it doesn't use any forging potential at all. And lastly, Puck has another really cool feature for crafting. It has a chance to crit, which if it crit on the minion damage, then block chance on effectiveness would go up too. Or I think it can do just two levels on minion damage. And that feels really good and does not use any forging potential. But what about Glyph of Chaos? Glyph of Chaos will use 1 to 12 forging potential, but it will actually change the mini damage to mana regeneration. So maybe that was what I needed. And uh, it will, let's say if this was tier four and you're upgrading into tier five, it will go to the last tier and you can change it after that, but maybe you get lucky and you hit something you really wanted. Glyph of Order is basically if like on this ring where the stats were really high rolled, you will upgrade the minion damage or mana region or whatever, and it will stay at the same place in the range. So if you already have a top rolled stat, this could be good to do, especially if you're doing something really um, important. Glyph of Despair, a little bit similar to Fracturing Orbs in Path of Exile. So you can see here that items only have two prefixes and two suffixes. However, if I fracture this, it has a chance, it didn't here, but it has a chance that this would be sealed. And the lower the stat of the item, if it's tier 1, 2, or 3, and you seal it, it'll stay at that level, but you will just get it as an extra. And this last one, um, I haven't used, but it rerolls a rare affix into an experimental affix. So we're not going to cover that right now. But that is the last epoch crafting system. I think it's so nice and so deterministic, and I know a lot of people are going to enjoy it. So uh, I wanted to cover that, and uh, I hope you have a blast with it. And that is the crafting system of Last Epoch. So it's super simple. You'll get into it very fast. And what makes it extra cool is the filter. Now, you can see that I haven't done a lot on a filter here. And I can show a few different ones that I've made. A lot of build guides like Max Roll will have loot filters with their guide. But I've actually found it really easy to make my own. So as a tip for new players, and this is what I really like doing, is I will go through and the first thing I do is I will recolor every single class specific thing to red. They aren't that common and I really like keeping them so that I have a lot of build options. Um, so I shard a lot of those. Now, obviously if you're, if you're finding like you're getting too much, you can very simply turn off the other ones than what you're playing. But at the very least, I always want to have the, all the stats, all the special ones. Like if I'm playing a primalist, I really want to see all the plus wolves and uh, different things like plus thorn totem, because I don't know if I'm going to respec. I don't know what different builds I'm going to do. So I do this on every single filter and it's so easy. You just click add rule. You click on recolor. You choose a color you want. You add condition. You click on affix and boom. This is literally what you would do. And that's how simple it is. Now you do have a lot of advanced stuff you can play around with here, but it is so easy to play around with. So you go back, you recolor, and maybe I want to look for a specific item type. So let's say that I'm looking for a two-handed axe for my primalist build. And then you can see here that I'm looking through the different bases. And this is, you will, you can even see and look up ahead of time what the different bases are. So maybe here I want the bar dish. And obviously you can see that it's item level 71. So I'm not going to get that early. And you could just click all of them. So it's keeping an eye out for all those two-handed axes. And now we've recolored those. If you don't need that all the time, you can like just disable it like that. And here we have hide all normal and magic items. And very often later, I will add a hide all rare item rule. So very easy to work out loot filter. I've on all of my characters so far, just been making it as I go. I've been thinking, ooh, I need a new boot. And then I would look up, let's see what like, and you just choose a different color. And, and then I would just be looking through all the different boots and, uh, try to decide like what do I want what I want at the end game what I want during leveling like oh okay these are really nice early I'll find them around level 23 and they have 10 to 12 movement speed and then later we see I have Solarum Greaves I have Heoboran Boots and I might end up using some of those because they implicitly have so much resistances the game does also have idols this is similar to charms in Diablo 2 but they do have their own charm window they're pretty self explanatory what they do some of them can be great like Increased health, health, and resistances are really good things as well. And here you have some that are more like actually working with skills. And there are some that will literally be build enabling. And you unlock the idols um, by doing quests through the campaign. 
So once you've gotten all of the 8 out of 8 idle slots, and once you've gotten the 15 out of 15 passive points, you don't need to do that anymore. So there's a lot of the side quests like these. Uh, the, the golden one is the main quest, you will have to do that. But uh, the green ones or turquoise ones, you don't have to do all of them once you've gotten all these. So we are actually making a how to or what you need to do in the campaign for those that do want to go a little bit faster, especially for returning players that maybe feel like they're a little bit slow during the campaign uh, and want to speed up. Yeah, we have a, uh, a guide with Tarek that is uh, going to be going through that. That being said, there are so many different skills, so many cool things to try out. Absolutely love the different things you can do in this game. Like with Fireball, you can make it so that you're firing multiple Fireballs to get better clear. You can focus around making your Fireball ignite, which is what I'm doing. I can show you that in a second. You can make it so that it's firing in a burst for single target. You can make your ele Elemental Nova f like go at ranged. Like there's just so many different things you can do in this game and it is just absolutely wonderful. So I wanted to make this like quick guide for new players to show what you can do in this game, a little bit about how to get started, and I hope it kickstarts your journey in a wonderful way. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you again to 11 Hour Games for the sponsorship opportunity. I hope you guys love the video, and more importantly, try to die less than I do.